Hey, what's going on everybody? This video is where we start getting hands-on with object-oriented programming. We're going to create our own struct in this video. Now, when it comes to file structure, I've been kind of tinkering with the files, so maybe I lost track of where you guys are, but basically I'm starting from scratch in this OOP folder, and then I have this main.cpp, and this is all we have. So you should be able to get to this point pretty quickly, and then we can work together on building some complex applications. Now let's get into creating structs, but first you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase, and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Creating a struct is pretty easy, and to start with, it's easiest if you just do it all in one file. So all of our code is going to go in this main.cpp, and then later on you can branch this out into multiple files if that helps for organization structures. But for simple applications, there's no need in making it extra complicated. So we're just going to do it right here. To create a struct, all you do is say struct, and you give it a name. Now by convention, I use a capital letter here. All of my custom types, I start with a capital letter. Now we can put our data members inside of this struct. So what does each user need to have? So for example, we can create a string variable called first name, maybe another one last name, and then let's say we have another one status. And when you're done with the struct, I always forget to do this every single time. You have to put a semicolon to end the struct. At least this time I remembered before compiling it, so I'm making progress. Now this is defining the structure. It's like defining the columns of a table. And each user is going to give a value for first name, last name, and status. We don't assign the values here inside of the struct, although it is possible to give default values. In general, we will want to do this on a case-by-case -case basis. And to do that, we need to create an instance of this struct, aka an object, like so. We say user, and then we give it a name. In this case, we use the same word, but this one has a lowercase. Or if that's confusing to you, you can use something else such as me. That's what I'll go with in this video. And then all you have to do is say me dot first name, and you can assign it a value. And then just do that for all of the data members. And there you go. That is how you create a struct and then instantiate the struct and assign values to the data members. We can access these values the same way we did here. For example, you can say me.firstName and output that here. So now let's compile. And we didn't get any errors, so we're doing pretty good. And then when we output this, let's see what we get. We get first name is Caleb. Now this first name here can be accessed because its access modifier is public. By default, things inside of structs are public. We can change this by defining something as private, like so. We just put the private keyword, and then generally we'll indent everything after the private keyword. Now when we compile, we're getting an issue. That's because we're trying to set the value of status, but we can't because it's private. When something is labeled as private, we're not able to access it from the object. So if it's private and we can't access it from the object, when would we ever use it? Well, oftentimes we'll have methods inside of here that will need to access this private data. It's basically a way for us to store information without exposing it to the public world through public access through an object. And that'll make a little bit more sense once we start talking about objects and methods. For now, structs are usually just to contain data. So that means variables of a particular type. They're usually not for methods. Oftentimes, people will switch from a struct to a class once they start wanting to use methods. But just for giggles, let's put a method in here just to get a feel for how that works. Now, do we want this to be after the status or do we want it to be up here? Well, we actually want it to be up here because we don't want it to be private. So you can define it here or you can define it after the variables. That's totally up to you. All you have to do is say what the return type is, the name of the function. We'll just call it get status if I can type. And then all we're going to do is say return status. And here you can see the use of private variables. We can access that private variable here, and that's totally fine because we are still within the struct definition. So status is accessible here inside of these curly braces, but it's not accessible down here 
outside of those curly braces. This is not going to work, so we're just going to get rid of that line. Now to use this method, all you have to do is on a particular object, just put a dot and then put the function name, so get status. For example, instead of saying me first name, we could say me dot get status. Now this ain't gonna do much because status doesn't currently have a value. So when we run this, you can see it just has a blank and we should probably change first name to status. Now it just says status and it's blank. You can assign a default value to this up here. For example, we could say the default is gold. Now when we compile and run, we should get gold. Looks like we got a little error because the inline assignment is actually reserved for C++11. So what we want to do is just say standard equals C++11. And there we go, now we can run. And voila, status is gold. So that is your introduction to creating structs. We just covered the bare basic minimum. Once we get into classes, we're going to get into a little bit more detail, some of the different things you can do. But for now, you understand data members and you understand methods. And you have a little bit of a feel for access modifiers, specifically the difference between public things and private things. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out the next video because we're going to start talking about classes and objects. Structs are similar to classes in that they will also produce objects, so there's not a huge difference. It should be a pretty easy learning curve. So go check that out and have some fun. I'll see you guys in the next video and please be sure to subscribe.